the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. What we're going to do is integrate with technology. The era of spatial computing is here. Just the different, like, everywhere. Yeah, there'll be nowhere to escape. So if it, if it isn't built on a solid foundation, it is a very scary thing. The danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads. Well, 5,000 years ago, there was no technology that could have destroyed the planet. Now we're at World War III. 99.9% chance that AI will wipe out humanity within the next 100 years, emphasizing that no AI model has been completely saved. You Computers are better. We're talking about here and now. This is not science fiction. The scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think they should. The European Union is on the brink of becoming the first major power in the world to regulate artificial intelligence. Beyond human control, the risk of AI, according to Jan Polsky, include everyone will suffer and wish they were dead, or humans losing their purpose as AI takes over jobs and creativity. Deep fakes. There's God, so many deep fakes. People keep sending me commercials that I've never done. This thing is replaced. Thing. Hollywood is gonna look just like Detroit did when the auto Audiences could soon see a new performance by James Dean, who died in 1950. Driven content is appearing in elections around Bill the world. Likeness is going to be a core asset for every performer. Films written by machines. How it can create performances that don't exist. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Uh, and we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government. It's the end of creativity for human beings is what it's, it's, what it's going to lead to. and beloved profession to the movies. Anyone who has ever been privileged to direct a film, when you finally get it right, there are not many joys in life that can equal the feeling. Images are very powerful, I should say. We have to start and teach younger people how to use them. I know myself, I don't like uh, to read what something is about. I've been real quiet about this. I, let's say I've been hiding and staying low key about it because I've been trying to examine it and understand it as much as possible. Seeing the progress is insane. It's, 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 it's going pretty fast. It's crazy. No, it's a little concerning. It absolutely is a little concerning. What are people going to talk about a decade from now? How would they describe today? I feel like our generation has this urgency to want to be able to slow down because of how fast things are going, especially if things like singularity happen, which is like the prediction of like tech going so rapidly fast and improves itself so consistently. There's no limit to creativity. That part's exciting. But what does that mean? And that's a really interesting question to have because I don't think humanity's ever had the opportunity to ask that question. A computer has always been a bicycle of the mind, uh, something that, that takes us far beyond our inherent abilities. And uh, I think we're just at the early stages of this tool, very early stages. Hasn't that always been the point of technology? For it to be this tool to amplify our talents and special abilities? At least that's how I've always viewed it. It wasn't up until now that I've ever considered it not needing a driver to control it. I've never imagined a scenario where anyone with the basic ability to type could have a computer craft an entire script, movie, painting, photo that is actually good instantly. What does that mean for us fellow artists? But if you're as paranoid as me, then you won't stop to look around till you find an answer that'll let you get back to sleep at night. AI is the first tool in history that can make decisions by itself. Can create new ideas entirely by itself. The people who know the most about it seem among the most worried about it.
I'd like to be more positive about the evolution of art if that's what this is. But it's hard to be with a company like Apple announcing their own Apple intelligence is that they are supposedly devoted in keeping personal information safe. Mind you, this Apple intelligence is being powered by OpenAI. So, the same guys that won't answer what their video model sore is being trained on. It's more clear than it's ever been that not a single one of these companies gives a single flying shit about any of us. It feels like since we're currently in this vast wild west of this technology that everyone behind all this is racing not only to create the model that will capture all the attention and secure the demand, but that they know that there's a bunch of room to break ethical and moral rules that have not yet been placed. This argument of training an AI model on somebody else's hard work. Their art that they've placed years to develop in order to give the access for anyone to slightly manipulate the work and make it their own for that company to make a profit in return, it just hasn't really sat well with me. They're performing the greatest art heist in history. Look, I'm not here to combat what is happening or to figure out a way for us as a collective to stop this. I'm just here to talk about it. And to be honest, in the business aspect, it's pretty damn smart. It makes sense that they would want to figure out a way to automate art. But my question is, can the camera become obsolete? Is it ethically right to create new performances by actors that aren't even around anymore? Who gets to decide that and who can have access to this? Gennaro's use of de-aging tech in The Irishman felt ironic to me, since his breakthrough role was a young Brando in The Godfather Part 2. Had this tech existed in 74, De Niro might have missed out on an Oscar possibly affecting his entire career, and we would have never gotten his version of old Brando, which was so good. With AI further blurring the distinction between authentic and fabricated, identifying one another could become irrelevant. And if all this is possible, why shouldn't we do it? How do we as a species come together to ignore such an invention? It just simply wouldn't happen, even if we had the right people to regulate it. One day we'd reach a point where someone would eventually come around and change the rules. And I don't mean that in a hopeless way at all. I mean it in the sense of let's get this over with so we can start problem solving the new obstacles we'll face as artists or enthusiasts of any kind. And even regulation in itself is scary. It all depends on who's deciding the rules and their intentions. Imagine if AI could detect problematic opinions that don't fit the current narrative and censor them instantaneously it would be an invisible form of censorship not so far from the tyranny is it but the biggest issue we have is what the hell would we even believe to be true every day we're getting closer to being fooled by generative imagery and audio but what's not being talked about enough is that this isn't just about artists being protected this is about the security of humanity overall just because you have the capability to build a bomb in your backyard doesn't mean you have the right to do so you should not have the right to be able to place anyone's face in anything or use someone else's likeness in any way to create a false history of that certain individual unless they've given the right to. And even that seems like a slippery slope that would lead to the belief of people doing things that they've never even done before. You can't deep fake a president declaring a nuclear war. How many of us are going to be falsely accused of a crime until we actually crack down on this? Again. These are all issues we've already had, but now imagine the barrier of entry for bad actors to come to play with being enhanced 10 times stronger by every update. We're not so far from a reality where a kid in his basement in Indiana has the power to rewrite history the during the house. Y2K bug. People terrified that a simple date change was going to send technology spiraling into chaos. The amount of businesses that capitalized on that global panic. Computer repair shops, charging for Y2K tests, books were sold on how to prepare for the disaster. It does not take much to convince us of anything. Even Orson Welles was capable of tricking an audience into thinking a Martian invasion for actual news in his radio adaptation of War of the Worlds. When we were giving this role, were you aware the terror was going on throughout the nation? Oh no, of course not. Time and time after again, we're being manipulated and being convinced of what we think we want. Imagine if you will, a sanctuary, a place where the pulse of life vibrates with an ending bliss. A realm so mesmerizing, you question the very fabric of your own existence. My friends, be a part of history or be vilified by it. It sucks to feel like we're being forced to have to accept and support what could ultimately kill the magic of making movies, or, or even us. Every technological shakeup, from LimeWire, Napster, to sampling and music, has gotten great pushback, meanwhile giving birth to new genres, tastes, and opportunities, allowing new voices to redefine the entire landscape. It's not necessarily about replacing old with new, it's transforming how we create and interact with media, to create this big space. My friend Bryce said, it's a good thing because technical skills will become less of a factor with making videos or movies. What separates good work will be creativity and how deeply people resonate with the concept. 
Director Paul Trillo said, Sora is at its most powerful when you're not replicating the old, but bringing to life new and impossible ideas we would have otherwise never had the opportunity to see. Try to put yourself in the shoes of your 10-year-old self again. How would you think of all this, or approach it, without all these limiting views that come with being an adult? There's numerous of companies coming out of the woodworks with the goal to empower creative people. These guys at Bloomberg Scream Time, they've made an app that allows actors to easily approve or suggest edits to their scene. The team has a commitment to solving new industry challenges and by ensuring actor consent and creative control. Or the company Wonder Dynamics, co-founded by actor Ty Sheerden, aims to make high quality visual effects more accessible and affordable for filmmakers. I guess that's why we're willing to risk so much, right? Not just because of the curiosity of what if, but the potential it has to benefit us could be too valuable to pass up. But do the pros outweigh the cons? You're gonna do something, you're gonna pursue a craft, you're, you're, you're crazy. You're crazy, because you're easily going to get replaced. But cheers, cheers to the belief. Absolutely, I condemn you. I look up to you. I truly do, I truly do, because you got some balls. This year has been the biggest wake up call. You have a bigger perspective whenever you feel like things are being taken away from you. You think about things a little differently. It's supposed to be uncertain, it's supposed to feel like this. When we feel like everything's being pulled from right under us, it's the biggest chance to grow, to learn new things and join new communities and speak about it, you know, speak up about it. Because a lot of change is coming. A lot of change within the realm of whatever it is that you do. Jake Gyllenhaal in the fucking Nightcrawler when he starts getting all mad and he hits that fucking mirror and it breaks his hand and he stays in character. That's what makes a movie. I, I could never do that because he wouldn't have broken the mirror. He would have just screamed at it. You know what I mean? Like that's what people do. I, I can't do that. What if it gets so good at imitating those beautiful accidents? What if it gets so good at predicting That's fucked. That? That's so like, fucked up. That? Yeah. That's so fucked up, bro. Like I feel like... Dude, I would be extremely entertained, bro. Like, I just, I'm, a, I'm like a viewer, bro. I'm gonna appreciate that shit. Like, I, I don't think like, dude, I don't know, man. That's an excellent question. So AI is like building something, but then they're not really like putting the pieces together. They're not laying out the concrete, doing whatever, making it happen. If it gets to that point where it is doing that and effortlessly and it's better than what you and I could do yeah. or like five people in a room with like a hundred million dollars and they could do it like in an instant, 30 seconds on some render times. Like, yeah, bro, then like, then we might be out of a job. I'm a very like optimistic person when it comes to like creative elements because I'm just I'm just like an excited person to see and I'm also very curious. So it's like it's like like I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, I really don't like think of negative stuff until it happens to me, you know? So like once it happens then we'll like maybe move a little bit different. But for now I'm I'm gonna stay curious as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> that way. There's no better place to run off to when I've been too much in my head. I was craving community and a fresh perspective on what I've been dealing with. Crazy. How like, long have you had this guy? Oh, bro, like a week. I moved through. Literally just a week. I moved through quick. Damn. You gotta be a little bit farther uptown to see it, Yeah. A singular day in New York City, you can be in five different neighborhoods surrounded by 20 different ethnicities hearing different languages, unique landscape because all the architecture is different, all the people are different. There's a surplus of stories. And I think for me, it's been such a, an important piece of my life to be able to kind of find uh, my voice within all of these voices around me. Because we grew up in this generation that's so digitized and so manipulated by social media and things of that nature, I realized that I think there's going to be a huge resurgence of the physical 
thing that is where the art exists. I think magazines are gonna make a big comeback. It's why every kid and their friends are trying to repurpose a zine. I have a really close friend in New York who who's on his third issue of a, of a bar review literature zine. And it's, and it's so exciting because there are IRL events that can take place with that, you know, like a launch party, um, you know, this human interaction about a, a, an article that somebody wrote or an essay that somebody wrote. And I think we're missing that. I think that there's gonna be a huge resurgence in literature as a whole. I think people are gonna start writing and reading books again because they're gonna wanna know what this time really felt like in a, in a longer form thing that you can't really tell in a tweet, right? You can't tell it in 240 characters or a thousand characters. Technology is never gonna slow down, but I think the human response to that technology is what will keep us grounded as a, as a set of creators and as a set of, as, of, of you know, lifers. The reason why I'm into the, the analog film is the community behind it, bro. I mean. You've got chemists, you've got archivists, you've got colorists, you've got technicians. There's a whole underground industry to making these things run. So it's more than just the image. Nobody really was doing it around me and it felt like a forgotten medium. And there's just no mediums of art that have been lost in human history, you know? There's oil paintings from 3,000 years ago. But with this stuff, it's, it has the potential to be lost to the next generation, into the next digital shooters. And I was inspired to learn about it because maybe I could be the one to inspire others to do it, you know what I mean? And keep, and keep it going from generation to generation. You, you don't get these cameras from a corporation, you know? You get them from dealers and, and technicians and real people. I mean, it does the same thing that a digital camera would do, but in a way that's not instant gratification and not easy and super inconvenient. I think AI or anything wouldn't truly be able to simulate. I feel like kind of pissed off about it, dude. I mean, I feel like it's stealing from what generations past have created. There's not good vibes around it. I mean, you can say that it could be used for good or, but I just don't really buy that. I just feel like it's gonna be used kind of juice creators out of the market with it. I don't want to work with AI. I would rather work with real humans and real individuals that like have experiences that they're going to draw upon, not just some computer that's putting all those together. So like, sh could I see it in my workflow? Maybe if I like had to get to that point, but I would always choose to have people working with me than just computers. Um, taking a collection of all other creators and pumping out a new image, you know? But it's not a new image, it's just a mashup of everybody else's. So in a way, it's like micro-stealing the idea or the creativity. And I don't think that's right. And I hope generations from now, there will be more data rights for that stuff. And so that creators are protected and their work is protected. So and we're not just all products. Yeah. I, uh, we'll see, I yeah. guess. You yeah. know? <laughs> The only thing that you can really, that's closest to what your human eyes see, that's not your human eyes, is probably film. The colors, the emotions especially. There's no other medium that captures emotion as good as film. AI won't cut it for me, but the general public, they'll realize what the actual thing is about, the actual taste the actual aesthetic. All these Marvel films that are coming up, I mean, it's like Martin Scorsese said, they're theme parks. I mean, you can enjoy them, it's just like junk food. Once in a while, you might want that, but they're not gonna stay forever if you wanna be healthy. Just like AI art, if you wanna be true to yourself, uh, you, 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 you will reject this fake medium. I mean, chess, AI chess be human like 2000s. Do human ever give up on chess? No, they don't. We're not gonna give up filmmaking as well. They, they can imitate. They can imitate for sure. They can, they can imitate. They can. As green as the neon lights of the, the Wong Kar Wai film, but they would never truly capture the zeitgeist of the 90s Hong Kong like the way Wong Kar Wai really did. They would write as good. Doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's the, true, the true spirit. The true spirit is, I don't think you ever find in anything else besides a human heart or a human brain. I think that's...
it's, it's not trying to build on top of that. It's trying to shatter the bones. It's not trying to make it better. And I think that's the issue, and that's why people are striking right now. That's why SAG is on strike, writers are on strike, is because people are like getting to a point where it's like, this, this isn't benefiting like the mass majority. This, isn't, this is only benefiting a few rich people to get richer, to save some money, but it's not benefiting the entireties. I personally you know, find myself frustrated over someone who has moved here and sacrificing a lot to be out here, to learn everything, to then hear that there's this impending force called AI that can take over my jobs. And part of me, you know, asked myself like, well, fuck, like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, is, you know, but then there's the other part of me that's like, uh, like this isn't, you know, I, 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 I don't think so, I, I, I don't believe it, and that's the hope. Um, The truth is, it's just not all that entertaining anymore. I'm lucky enough that I came from a time where I had a couple songs on an iPod that I could just listen to repeatedly and enjoy and cherish or, or wait and have anticipation for that movie that was going to come out in that theater. Now you have everything. And I can't really say that that's a good thing. Miyazaki's perspective, viewing AI's ability to mimic human suffering without truly understanding it to the death of the human experience, it had a significant impact on him. He said, we humans are losing faith in ourselves. Today we're so fixated on how fast our output can be that we somehow stripped away the true meaning within our movies. Reboots, sagas, regurgitated on some endless conveyor belt. I do think that there's some benefit of living life before any of this change. Not only have I been able to find my own voice, but to have learned through the traditional ways of working on a project. All I've ever dreamed of has been to be a part of the movies I know. I've lived my life based off the records of what's already been done. That was a different time. It could be true that maybe it's too late for me to be a part of it now. But who cares? Because you have to do it anyways. Scorsese says, don't pay attention to the industry. Do your own thing. We must find our own way. Go where we're drawn to go. Bring to the filmmaking craft that maybe not everybody else is doing. Maybe not everybody else can do or is thought to do. The actual truth is that there's most likely numerous of ways to do what you love that haven't even been invented yet. So clearly, you have to make your movie. Ooh, change never hurt, huh? Ooh, variety. Hit this, yeah. <laughs> The time machine? What kind of a DeLorean? The Durango night to go where no one has gone before. If there was no profit or egotistical motivation to be creative, maybe human art would have been more honest. Art for art's sake. So even if AI is just one big reason out of the millions of why you shouldn't pursue it, just remember there will only ever be one reason to. And that's the fact that it makes you happy. Is it even worth being so bothered by all this? Like, what's the point of this entire video? To complain and be so entitled about creative mediums that we have no control over? Where they go or end up? What could it be dictating me so much about all this? Why must it feel so personal? Could it be that I'm aware of the countless efforts that were placed behind to make such moving work? Could I know Van Gogh suffered being misunderstood his entire life? Or that a bright mind like Da Vinci accepted ridicule of his inventions? Copeland nearly lost his mind. The media painted him as a failure. He risked bankruptcy. He faced a typhoon that wrecked sets. Martin Sheen had a heart attack. Or a film that took 10 years. Herzog's Fitz Carlton moved a 320-ton ship over a hill. Faced injuries and dealt with Klaus Kinski. 
I abandoned this project, I would be a man without dreams. Think about artists that use their work to make a difference, like Lenny Bruce, who gave up his reputation to push the boundaries of free speech, or Kathleen Hanna, the singer of Bikini Kill, who used her music to tackle issues like sexual violence and reproductive rights. The graffiti artists like Banksy and David Sorrenti created pieces in the most complicated, highest buildings. How does another person get up so high and risk so much? Or sell their car, give up an apartment, and disconnect phones, lose significant weight, and move to Europe all for a movie. <laughs> Is this what Charles Bukowski meant by going all the way? Why Salvador Dali urged us to have no fear of perfection, or what Orson Welles meant by tearing yourself apart? <laughs> See, there's something inherently captivating about the efforts done by man. Extreme sports, the Olympics, method actors, we don't seem to get bored of pushing human limits. Why? Because they challenge our perceptions of how far we can actually go, that's why. It can be one individual, no different from you, who desires more for themselves. They'll approach the game differently or ignore how the task has been done and succeed in a way that defies what was once considered logical. Now it feels possible for you. It makes you think, could I have the courage to do that? What if I were to follow their path? It's like when I first witnessed Mike Mo Capaldi switch flip at the intro of Fool's Game. That's all I had to see to make me want to make a skate video. Or when I first saw River Phoenix's performance in my own private Idaho. Where do you think you're running, man? It made me want to act in my own movies. Or even when I learned about Steve Jobs dropping out of school, working from his parents' garage to build Apple. I too dropped out of school. I want to build my own thing. It's why we still race each other, despite the fact that we've created cars and trains that are faster than us. It's why Benny Pazienza kept training in the face of his paralyzing neck injury. The reason that guy ran across Africa, or why this guy skydived from space and breaking the speed of sound. Or even documentaries of humans who have made it through lethal situations, like this group chasing tornadoes and they got stuck in the middle of them. And with these stories even be that interesting if it was a robot instead in these scenarios or if it was completely generated because it wouldn't even mean anything you are not machines you are not cattle you are men experience of one another pushed far enough has the power to start rebellions discussions shape the minds of those who tuned in triggering anger for injustice sympathy for the unfortunate inspiration to those who have never thought for themselves we've always been interested in humans doing cool shit tell me how do you automate that how do you replicate the authentic thrill of human triumph and see the result of what not only took months but years and in some cases decades how do you encode or recreate artificially that kind of relationship between a performer and a viewer into an algorithm i don't doubt that it can be done of course not. But how long would that even last until the trickery was exposed? We want to know what you're saying is true, that it can be trusted. We want to believe the uphill battle could be true. Not some fictional fable that has no meaning because it never actually happened. This seems to be hardwired into us. Your voice matters more than you probably give yourself credit for. So if all this I'm saying holds truth, what comes after? The truth is it's up to you. Only you know that. Only you can decide which way you're going to choose. Are you optimistic enough to go this way? Meanwhile, everyone's going this way. Whatever it is, you gotta decide. For someone who's as ambitious, who loves this thing, and is just genuinely so curious of what I'm capable of doing within the space, if everything is easy to make, movies, features, all, what comes after that? Is it the base for something greater? Will help us make art that we can't even comprehend today. Stuff that we wouldn't even understand. Maybe the things that become easy today will help us achieve the things that are hard tomorrow. Whenever I went about making my first short film, it came only from a place of curiosity and love. Curious about whether it could be done or not, but filled with enough love to see yourself try. I didn't know what it was before, whenever I started it. I didn't think I was gonna get that obsessed over something. I mean, you, you can't, you don't predict these things, they just kinda happen. 
it's ignorance, you know, it's being being ignorant enough to make a movie. I had no money for professional actors or locations or anything. I was just looking around for whoever was down and that was my friends, my family. And they became super passionate about it. I mean, we shot till 5 a.m. some nights. It was never about how it would be received. I can't recall there ever being any exterior goal. We genuinely wanted to make a movie. Social platforms, metrics, it didn't influence the project whatsoever. We had made it for us. What people don't understand about critical thinking and creativity and taking time on the project is you're learning so much about yourself and life itself. It's not some repetitive job you do mindlessly. Every small piece you contribute holds significance, even those not included in the final cut. When you take your time and narrow in your focus, hours will feel like seconds, weeks will go by faster than anticipated. We relentlessly pursue truth and wrestle with existential questions, slowly helping you learn how to deal with your emotions to become an overall better human being. Technological advancements serve as a reminder that the only true possession you have as a human is your consciousness and your ability to expand it. What we do will be exploited and manipulated to make quick bucks, whatever. But to the marginalized individual that only has love and passion to want to make something new, will always be the one to make the difference. I believe artists still have ample time to explore, connect, and ultimately, if you play your cards right, to live, to truly live. Sometimes I, I wish I didn't fall in love with movies. I think I would have lived a calmer life with all the energy and money and time that it takes to make them. But I suppose eventually that would have gotten boring. I guess I'm screwed.